I mean, I've learned that anger is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Dallas, the height of gang culture. Yeah. Anger would take a, your life. Doesn't matter your age, right? Do you remember the phrase, a bullet doesn't have a name? Yeah. Yeah, I grew up in that, right? Like I grew up around this culture where, you know, you get into an altercation and someone could fire a, a weapon off, right? At a park, it doesn't matter who's there, right? So in a lot of ways, I've always viewed anger as this thing that could take life. It's like, man, you don't want to be angry, right? Yeah. I think being in a position as a disruptor, recognizing that all things have redemptive value to them, right? I now look at anger as a passion. It's like you're passionate about something. And so it's almost like a knife, right? So a knife can be used to stab someone and to inflict harm on another human being unjustly, right? But a knife can also be used to carve a turkey. It can be used to, you know, I only eat fish, <laughs> right? <laughs> I gotta be honest, I only eat fish, right? So it could be used to fillet a fish. It could be used to do something beautiful with. The same is true with anger. It's just a tool, right? And so for me, one of the things that I do with my passion or my anger, however you wanna communicate it is, I look and I say, man, is this system just? Is it equitable, right? Is it okay for me to be frustrated with? It? Absolutely. Now here's the issue with it. Are my actions constructive or destructive, right? And I think when you start getting down into the weeds of all of this, we have to then assess the value of how you're expressing yourself as to whether or not it's good by saying, is this building something up? Or is this simply tearing something down? Mm. Um, and you know, you look at Rosa Parks, they were building something up. They were building up the beauty of equality that gave people dignity to be able to operate in social spaces that reflected what the laws were already saying they should have, right? When you look at other individuals where they then, to anger, respond, they take life unjustly. Now you say that is that is um, destructive forms of anger. And so I think that we have to be very careful when you see people with passion, instead of labeling them and villainizing them because they're passionate, you then have to ask, okay, if you are passionate, show me how your passion or your anger is leading to something constructive, mm. right? Yeah. What do you think, bro? Yeah, I think that's powerful, man. And it, it, also, it also makes us a little more accountable because in some ways we can let ourselves off the hook by being angry. That's right. There, there's something about being angry, especially at the right things, that can easily make me look righteous. That's right. I see something bad happening over there and I say, oh, I can't stand that. I, I, I must be a good brother, right? That's right. I must have integrity, but what? how am I translating that anger into constructive action that's, right. that's gonna minimize the probability that a bad thing like that happens again? That's good. And if I'm not doing that, well, having the right emotional response mm -hmm. isn't enough to make me virtuous, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah. yeah, my wife was sharing with me, there was a there was a, a woman in history, it's Black History Month, and she was saying that um, her daughter did not receive treatment. They gave her treatment for the hospital, outside of the hospital, made her angry, right? She just could not believe well, yeah. that the hospital would not treat her based off the color of her skin. So what she did was she used that anger or that passion and she went, gained a bunch of resources and she built a hospital. That's what I mean when I say using that passion to be constructive and not destructive, right? Now, yeah. if she had went and blown up a hospital, that would be <laughs> destructive, right? Yeah. But the fact that she took that experience, that pain, this, this thing that had happened to her personally and used it to energize conviction. Now she was being a part of the solution, not just echoing the problem. And I think that may be the greatest challenge of our day. Yeah, yeah. I think that people love to echo the problem, Yeah. but few are willing to actually participate in the solution. So go ahead, what do mm -hmm. you want to say? No, 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 man, uh, you, you got it. <laughs> you, you know, I, I mean, j just to make one, one quick tie-in with our earlier discussion on race, I think th this is one of the, um, one of the reasons why we have to uh, not be so quick to say, hey, 
don't be mad at that. Don't let that bother you. Or, or um, oh, it's it's not about what you think it's about. But we, we kind of, we, we kind of, because one of the reasons why people. The voice. Yeah, one of I the, can hear the voice. Yeah, yeah right, right. One of the reasons why people people dig in and double down on anger is because they don't feel acknowledged. Wow. They don't feel validated. That's right? good, bro. Um, and I think it's important to validate that anger because that's actually what empowers people to think constructively. Mm -hmm. You know, like black rage can be the world's greatest ally. That's right. If we validate it and say, hey, what can we build that's right. in order to make sure we alleviate those concerns? Hey, you're upset because you haven't seen any black superheroes on TV. I like that anger because that's going to be the source of creative action that's right. that results in us seeing that's right. what you want to see on television. That's good. And that's a better world, that's right? Good. But, but, we, but we can't fear it. We can't be like, oh, that makes me uncomfortable. We've got to make room for that uncomfortable conversation. And that's how we get creative action.